Hi, and welcome back to part two of CT of lymphoma involvement of the GI tract. And when we finished up part one, we were looking at initially gastric lymphoma. Then we started looking at small bowel lymphoma, and that's where I left off. I showed you a few examples of various appearances of small bowel lymphoma. How you can get bowel obstruction. I showed a nice case of involvement of the ileum extending into the cecum. We showed examples of bulky tumors, and here's a really nice example, a large, bulky, ulcerating mass. Interestingly, despite the large size of this tumor, the small bowel is really not obstructed. There's a large exophytic component present. If I looked at this, lymphoma is the thought, but I also would have considered a GIST tumor, gastrointestinal stromal tumor of the small bowel. I also would have considered metastasis. I guess one thing that's always interesting and you always have to remember, no matter how large lymphoma is, it may not obstruct the bowel. And again, a few very nice images showing you the extent of this patient's tumor and how it infiltrates a fairly long segment of bowel, very bulky, very infiltrating, but again, not obstructing. And at this point, there's no perforation present. Look at this case, abdominal pain. This was in the ER. Patient had no history. They weren't sure what was going on. Look at this bulky tumor with looks like an ulceration potentially. This ends up being a B-cell lymphoma of the small bowel. There's some ascites present. We don't see ascites commonly in patients with lymphoma. But look how bulky the lesion is. Look at the infiltration of over a 10 centimeter loop of small bowel and then the extension in the mesentery. But you can see from the axials, look how bulky the tumor is. And we thought maybe this was an ulceration, but you're really looking at the lumen and then it's the wall thickening, which approaches over two centimeters. Again, proximal to this large bulky tumor, the small bowel is not dilated. From a differential perspective, you could consider just adenocarcinoma metastasis, but at the end of the day, the appearance is really most consistent with lymphoma. And here it is on the PET scan, really nicely infiltrating the bowel and into the mesentery. And here's one more view. And again, PET CT is very good at lymphoma in general, but especially in GI tract involvement. Here are some images with some contrast in the lumen. These tumors also can bleed. Another example, bulky tuber. This is with positive contrast involving the small bowel. Less likely adenocarcinoma because of its bulkiness. Classic location, terminal ileum into cecum. Just very nicely shown in this case. B-cell lymphoma, stranding in the mesentery. Bulky tumor. And let's follow the patient a few weeks later after chemotherapy. So you go from this large infiltrating bulky tumor to now some bowel distension. There looks like some free air is present. There also looks like more inflammation and more, more ulceration. One of the things you always worry about in patients with lymphoma of the bowel, particularly when it's very bulky, is when they get chemotherapy, the chemotherapy can be very successful but since you have large tumors shrinking quickly, you can have perforation of bowel and ulceration. So here the tumor ulceration and necrosis has increased. There's perforation now present. There's also some bowel obstruction seen. Just a very nice example showing you the initial study with the tumor infiltration and more of the necrosis and the perforation following therapy. As we mentioned small bowel, we also mentioned polypoid lesions, and I mentioned before the polypoid lesions can intersuscept. Here's a patient with multiple intersusceptions, right? And these were multiple polypoid lesions. There's also tumor in the patient's right kidney, and this was also due to lymphoma. And when you think about intersusceptions in general, tumors at the top of the list, adenocarcinoma, lymphoma, and METs. There are functional causes like celiac and Crohn's disease, and of course, many benign tumors as well. Now, I mentioned that we think about uh, lymphoma of the stomach. We think about lymphoma of the patient's small bowel, as I just showed you. We don't typically think about colonic lymphoma, but it does occur. And I've seen two cases in the last maybe two months, which means uh, 
it's not that rare. Primary lymphoma of the large bowel accounts for under 1% of all tubers of the colon, and colorectal lymphomas constitute up to 12% of GI lymphomas. The cecum and rectum are the most frequent areas of involvement. Primary large bowel lymphoma can appear as localized, large extraluminal masses, or constricting masses simulating annular-type carcinoma, and may present with different patterns that are often quite similar to other large bowel tumors or even inflammatory disease, which is why this can be a very difficult diagnosis. So just something to consider, and I'll show you some examples. Colonic lymphoma usually presents with larger lesions and involves a longer segment of bowel compared to adenocarcinoma. Again, more commonly, colon lymphoma is near the ileocecal valve, can grow into the terminal ileum, and does not obstruct as typically adenocarcinoma will. Here's a patient with abdominal pain and low hematocrit. There's some thickening of the right colon seen, but there's a mass in the region of the cecum, which you can see here very nicely. There are multiple nodes present. Now, from a statistics perspective, a cecal mass is more likely an adenocarcinoma than any other malignancy I could think of. And you can get nodes from colon cancer, but in this case, it's bulky. There looks like maybe some involvement extending back to the terminal ileum. You see the adenopathy present. You can see it very nicely again on the patient's uh, volume rendered views. The small bowel is at best minimally dilated, but minimum is the comment and not obstructed. There's some vascularity present in the lesion. And here it is again. I think about intersusception when I look at this appearance, but it's some nodes, it's bulky tumor, and this was biopsied, and maybe we should have been stronger because of what looks like ileal involvement, and this was a uh, primary lymphoma of the patient's colon. Remember we said the region near the ileocecal valve and the cecum are the most common areas, and this case just a very nice example showing you that, and here it is on the cinematic rendering. B-cell lymphoma of the cecum. Just a really nice example. Another case, bulky tumor. You could even think about inflammatory disease. What if the patient had a perforation like a diverticulum or a appendicitis with an abscess? You could think about that. There's some dilated bowel present, but what's going on here? What's going on with that mass going on with obstruction? Could it be an adenocarcinoma? That's a good possibility. It is bulky, and we say lymphoma is bulkier than adenocarcinoma, but we commonly, or not uncommonly, see adenocarcinomas that are bulky. And this is just a nice example of tumor with ulceration, with some bowel obstruction. And again, I probably would favor adenocarcinoma of the colon, but that ended up being primary lymphoma. Another example. Now here in this patient with right lower quadrant pain and fever, there's a large bulky tumor present which also appears to involve the ileum. Really nicely shown there. The bulkiness, the lack of obstruction, and the ileal involvement make me think of lymphoma. Look how bulky the tumor infiltration is in the patient's right colon and involvement of the ileum. Just a really beautiful example of primary lymphoma of the patient's colon. Nicely shown there in the volume rendering. Nicely shown here on the cinematic rendering as well. Just a really, really impressive tumor. So again, maybe some takeaway messages would be, when you see a bulky tumor, you gotta think lymphoma, particularly when it's in the right colon. But also looking at ileal involvement. Ileum can be obstructed by an adenocarcinoma, but lymphoma is more likely to directly infiltrate into the ileum. So that's a helpful point. Again, colon uh, lymphoma, like small bowel lymphoma, like gastric lymphoma, is very positive on PET scan. A very nice example of diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. Now, when we speak about the various malignancies, again, we made the point, small bowel, stomach, and colon is going to be the least frequent. But again, it's a very important differential diagnosis. We all look at patients for a range of causes from fever to weight loss, palpable mass, 
And in our differential diagnosis, we need to really consider specifically what the likely possibilities are. We look at the presence of gastric involvement or bowel involvement, be it small bowel or colon. We look at the mesentery. We look for adenopathy. We look for spread of disease. Other things that are helpful, uh, lymphoma tends to be relatively hypovascular. It tends to be bulky. It can ulcerate. And all of those findings are critical in allowing us to make the great diagnosis when we can. Again, before therapy is instituted, Patients will, of course, get a biopsy, but a lot of times we're going to be the ones who make the right diagnosis. So with that, let me thank everybody for their attention and have a great day. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.